Willie D. Live. Man, you have had a storied life. Mm. Like, like you have been in some very important rooms with very important people. You've done some very important work. Work that is going to go down in the annals of history, like in pop pop culture. Like you have, like you're really that type of dude, you know, mm. like in when I when I when I look at the, the totality of your work, I mean, like it's so many roles that you play, and you steal the show. Like you're 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 st you're a show stiller. You you typically wouldn't play the big roles, yeah. but it be a big role. It end up being a big role just because of your impact. You know, for example, the, the role that you played in Poetic Justice. Mm. That role right there, like, I was wanting more of, I wanted more of Joe. More, mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted <laughs> let, me, let me back up. My, my fault. I was being disrespectful. I wanted more of Chicago. Chi Chicago. I wanted more Chi Town, right. baby. You know, like Chi Town. How did you even get that role? Um, that role came about with John, meeting John. I met mm -hmm. John at the Comedy Act Theater, watching Robin Harris when I first got out here. And John had written Boys in the Hood. I didn't know really know who he was. He was in the back of the Comedy Act Theater, looking all goofy and nerdy. And I used to be in this improv group, just myself, Ricky Harris. We used to always do anything to get on stage. Robin was yeah, running yeah, court. Yeah, R.I.P. Ricky, yeah, Ricky Harris. Yeah. So we was like trying to get up on stage. So we, we was in this improv group where uh, we would get up and for 30 minutes before Robin Harris got on, we warmed the audience up doing these skits. And um, and everybody was, I was the wildest one in there. And people were like, oh, you're funny. You're the crazy one, you know. So we, you know, we like your character. And so I was like doing anything. And then John was like, I'm, I'm going to put you in a movie one day. You're funny. And I was like, whatever. And he said, you country too. Where you from? <laughs> I was like, St. Louis. But he thought, he was like, Chicago sound better mm -hmm. when it came to the movie. So um, Robbie Reed, they was, this is like a melting pot of, you know, to get a star is born or where you, if you need to be on stage. Robin mm -hmm. Harris, Comedy Act Theater, Friday, Saturday, you know what I'm saying? Or Thursday, Friday, Saturday when it, when it got hot. Um, and you would get the agents in there and try to get on stage. This is where I, I introduced Jamie Foxx to his agent and all that. I got Jamie Foxx's agent. Yeah, you agent. got Jamie Foxx's first agent. Yeah, first, yeah, we, yeah, we took it as a package deal. I was like, yeah, look at Jamie too. Because um, Jamie, Eric Bishop, um, <laughs> his name is Jamie Foxx, but was, you know, he was trying to get noticed and trying to get on. But, but then, you know, you didn't have a name, you didn't have no connections. You just need to be in the right place at the right time. And um, that was one of the, the things that, that happened to me. So, um I saw John. I came from auditioning for Strictly Business, <laughs> and because uh, I wanted to really lead part, um, but they, they, you know, I wasn't. A star. I didn't have a name like Tommy. Um, you wanted the lead part. It was it strictly, it was strictly strictly business? business. Yeah, yeah, I went for the lead. And that that was. Uh Halle Holly Berry, Berry, yeah, Sam Jackson, yeah, 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 yeah. So I had the mail room, so they gave me that part in the mail room because they was like, "You did good, man." I was like, "Yeah, but I'm gonna lead." Like, well, we'll put you in the yeah. movie, but and that, that movie got me in a union. That was my first little tap Hartley. I did first. I did Talking Dirty After Dark, and then that's the other movie that got me another historic film with there a lot of so many damn yeah, stars in that, in that movie, movie, right? Man. Yeah, like how they pay for all those people? Well, back then, you know, it was SAG ultra low budget, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> really didn't have to pay Sam them. But Jack was in that movie. So, so many yeah. people in that movie, man. I, like, so, well, some you did. Me, I just wanted to get into the business, so you take what you can get at the time. Mm -hmm. You need the qualification, the speaking role in the movie, then you get another one, get you into it, you know, and then you're in the union you're just forever. To get the credits. Yeah. yeah, you need the credits. You need the speaking. You need the speaking parts yeah. so you know it's like okay anything to get there and i'll just keep inching my way um but no john kept his word i saw john at a uh at robbie reed's uh annual picnic barbecue that she has every summer mm -hmm. and we sat at the table and he's like man i just I wrote boys in the hood and you know we, man, i got this perfect role for you and for real we sat and talked for like an hour and a half and he mm -hmm. introduced me to uh, regina king and even because regina he had regina in mind he had ice cube in mind and he had uh, and Janet in mind. That was his stuff. And he fought for that. That was when his vision, that's what he wanted. And he he, you know, he, he was like, yo. They was like, who's this dude? And he was like, ah, he's good. And so he stuck with it. he wanted Ice Cube for the Pac role? Yeah. And how did Pac end up getting the role over Ice Cube? Well, well Cube didn't want to, he didn't, he wanted to play. Well, from now hearing it from his mouth, he didn't like the way he was like he didn't he wasn't cool with the character the way this character kind of did. Um, 
his buddy Chicago. He was saying like that, and and I heard he wanted to kind of change some of the roles. He wanted to play my role, you know, with the, with with, with the, and have go through that conflict with the woman and stuff like that. And then it was like at the time too, well, he didn't really want to be doing a romance comedy because the way his career was going so he mm -hmm. so he wasn't calling john back and he was just you know so it didn't work out and this is what john told me mm -hmm. john was like he won't call me back and be difficult and blah 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 blip and you know he was talking about asking about your role and he was and john was like nah the roles are the role the characters are the characters so oh so john singleton stood on oh yeah your character <laughs> yeah. he said like no nah, i got my man for that role yeah but but he also had the relationship down too. See, Cube wanted to change the relationship between. He he was saying, when I heard Cube say, it, he said he didn't want he, a real dude who wouldn't do his buddy like that, like leave him outside the role, and it wouldn't be, you know, they would they they would be different. And John was like, no, it is what it is. Now, refresh my memory about that. Exactly about the movie what happened. Well, well, I I know about the. I, I remember. Yeah. Well, in, in I the, remember the movie, but yeah. I don't. Rem I'm not crystal clear on exactly what happened. What part he's talking about? Where a real dude well, would leave like, his buddy. Like they left me on the side of the road and I was fighting a woman and all that stuff like that. And he was like, he wouldn't have done that because, you know, it would, that was a sucker move, you know, to like, you know, see mm. that, you know, the girl was drunk. And I mean, not, you know, I'm trying to just remember, yeah. trying to remember what Ice Cube was saying. But he was like the role that the relationship between Lucky and Chicago, Tupac, you know what I'm saying, and myself, he didn't like the way John had it. It was like some of it was suckerish you know, what he was doing, and he didn't want to kind of play that, you know, at, 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 at that time. He wanted to juice it up and be a little bit more hardcore. I wonder, you know, yeah, and I know Cube well. Me mm -hmm. and Cube have been friends for a long time. I'm wondering if Cube would take that same position today. You know, I, I think he answered that, too. I forgot what he said. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 don't, I don't think he would, because I, I would, I, I'm going to tell you, like, I would leave his ass on the side of the road. <laughs> like, you, you know, like, you boxing on a woman, uh, yeah. You know, I'm going to leave you on the Yeah, I'll leave you on the side of the road. Wait a minute, but didn't he leave Janet on the side of the road? <laughs> Who? <laughs> I mean, the, the character. The, see that character as well. Left Tupac and left Janet on the side of the road. He didn't want to play that character. He, yeah, he, exactly. He wanted to play your character. Or he just wanted to play that. Or he wanted to play Lucky. And he didn't want to get left on the side of the road. He, he, he wanted to play him a little. He, I think he said a little less suckerish. You know what I'm saying? Because remember, yeah. he put Janet out. Yeah. Me out, you know what I'm saying? So I guess it was he had a little conflict and with I, the character. I put a woman out before. I mean, yeah, a couple times, uh, you know. Like, but if, if that's well, not, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. To, but I wouldn't do it today, though. You know what I'm saying? But, right. but then again, that was then. That was then. They, I were, they were twenty something. <laughs> <laughs> you were twenty something. Yeah, I didn't know no better. So I would have, I would have probably put her out back. Yeah, I would have put her out in the middle back of the, then. On it depending on how I felt. <laughs> Especially if you want to get out. I remember when I was 18 years right. old, man, and I'm with my girl, man, and. And she, she, we were arguing about something. I don't even know what it was. And she was like, let me out. And we were on, like, this dark road in Fifth Ward. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> it right. was dark, bro. We were, like, in like in the, uh, what do they call it, the the factory district. You know, nothing but factories and stuff back here, like, off of, back, back in Fifth Ward. Right. And uh, she was like, let me out. I was so mad at it. I just... Uh, pulled over and I let her out, and I drove back to, to her house. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I drove back to her house, which was like maybe a five minute drive or something. So wow. that means she had a good twenty minute walk. Right. She had probably a good twenty twenty five minute walk or something like that. Mm. In any event, when I pulled up, mm. uh, let me see. No, it wasn't even five minutes. Anyway, it was a. She probably pulled up in about 30 minutes or so, so I don't know how long it was. Anyway, she pulls up, and uh, she walks up, and her brother and his buddies are standing outside. All right. I pull up first, <laughs> and they asked me, he asked me where, where she was. <laughs> I'm like, hey, she 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 walking. It's like, well, you say, yeah, you, you, you put my... You, you put my sister out. I said, no, nah, man, she wanted to get out. She asked me to get out the car, so I let her out. Right. And then she come walking up, and she she was mean mugging me. She walked up and, and just walked right past, past me. Everybody. I never saw her again. Wow. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't advise that today. Yeah. That is a bad, bad idea. Yeah. Wherever you pick a woman up at, you, yeah. 
that's where you need to drop her back off at. Yeah. You know, if that's where she if that's where she's going, right? right. If that's her final destination. Like I heard the guys talking about flying women in and if she don't put out, right. don't fly back. <laughs> that is a bad, bad idea. Yeah, that's a terrible idea. You mess around and yeah. get caught up in a situation where a woman mm-hmm. is gone, you know, she might decide to go there and accuse yeah. you of something you exactly. did not do. Exactly. So, fellas, if y'all out there, y'all listen to me, you listen to me good. You make sure that woman get back home, that girl get back home safely. Yeah, I, don't, I don't just they fly in and, you know, they yeah. don't put out. I mean, yeah. You know. But, you know, I mean, there's a two-way street there, too. Don't be flying in. If, you know, you think you're flying in for her. That's a good idea. Right it's like, there. you know, come on, yeah. what are you doing? But then they might fly in and be like, hey, okay, maybe you, 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 one of your tooth are bad, your breath stink, your feet small, you, you know what I'm saying? It could well, be, you know, it could be something on the internet that ain't true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll say, yeah. You well, know, women, flying women. in ain't no different than just, you know, yeah. going to an expensive restaurant. That don't guarantee you're going to get some just you're because right. you spent $200. You right about that. You know, uh, or three hundred or four hundred. But if they well, whatever they spend in these days, you know, they like to spend big money now for you know two hundred dollars right. ain't nothing. They probably oh that ain't no money. Somebody out there saying that ain't no money. Yeah. Uh, I spent fifteen hundred <laughs> on my date the other day at the restaurant. Man, for what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you invest in that? I, nah, for real. <laughs> to get the same, your belly, your your, hand, your stomach's no bigger than your hands. So what, what, uh, what are you doing? You what's what the saying? most you spend at the restaurant on girl? It depends Let's on say you're dating. You just yeah. dating. Her. You just started. Dating, y'all been out, y'all been going out two weeks. I mean, I would say we. I like to drink. Okay. So you know, it's gonna at least be three hundred dollars at least. At, it, it depends on where you're going to. We're going what, somewhere what like you, Papa Do's. We're going somewhere like you know, maybe maybe getting two fifty. But I, but yeah, I keep it under three. I, I keep it under three hundred. I drink mm-hmm. Tito's, uh, you know, or vodka, or I make and then celebration. I may you know, I may step it up a notch, but I can put down some drinks. So yeah. most of the most of the bill is gonna be most drinks of the with bill me. Is yours, your bill. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> so yeah, because I mean, you know, I mean, I you know, I don't date. Well, I'm married, but I mean, when I do date and and I have go out, you know, I do go out on dinner dates and stuff. I'm not spending, you know, I'm not, you know, what are you, what are you eating? Chicken and hamburger. I mean, what what costs that much? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I've I've tasted some good food, and I'm a great chef myself, so. Yeah, I'm saying you know. So who cooked the most? Are you or your woman? Oh me, man! You do oh, yeah. you do most of the cooking? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I can burn, man. What do you I think about cooking. these red pill dudes who say women should be cooking, not men? I don't know. You, yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> you go starve. <laughs> I like to eat. I like to eat. I like it to taste the way I wanted to taste. So I cook it. Nobody can. Nobody can do that better than you. You didn't. So you got you know that chef cook. style cooking down. Oh man, presentation I, yeah. and everything. Yeah, well, it depends on what it is, but I got I got some presentation. And you know, I'm yeah. five star. Am I going on the front of a magazine? I'm more of the bunker, backyard barbecue, kitchen, cook, right. get your meal. You know what I'm saying? I ain't I ain't about to. You know, you gonna get some lamb chops. You can steak what you want. You gonna get that same food. Yeah, but it's gonna be more wholesome. Uh, you know, it's gonna and be it's gonna be prepared. Grill. Oh yeah, it's gonna yeah. Be, well, I live in LA, it's gonna get so get to the table quicker. Oh yeah, come on man. Right. Yeah, and it's gonna yeah, it ain't gonna be all that you know you know like vegan. You know, and I, I don't eat. If it ain't, it, I got it. Got to be done. I ain't eating nothing raw. That's the vegetables. Man, how did you get the acting, the acting buzz? You know, did what came first, the acting buzz or the comedy mm-hmm. buzz? I know that you you did comedy first. We got to know you right. for your comedy first. But what came first as far as the buzz for you, acting or, or comedy? Um, comedy, because I'm you know naturally comedy is, is what I do, what I can get away with freely in school. Because all this is designed, you know. And I saw Sammy Davis Jr., like, you know, in that little TV back in the day when I was a kid. And I used to see him. He used to be on everybody's show back then. You only had NBC, ABC, CBS, mm-hmm. and the big shows back then. He'd be on all of them, and he'd be doing something different, acting, singing, dancing. Yeah. I was like, what? Wait, playing with pistols, doing mashing. I was yeah. like, oh, my God, who is this little <laughs> bad black man? Yeah. I, I got to get inside that TV. And so I tried to emulate Sammy Davis Jr. He was a, 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 a guide for me. And then the Nat King Coles, you can see the James Browns. And then you, then, but this dude could do anything, man. So I kind of patterned my lifestyle after, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. I don't have as, I don't have as many talents that he has. So I kind of just, okay, got to speak well. So, you know, okay, art, 
You got to articulate. You know, you got to be able to, if you want to be in this business, you want to be able to act. You can't be able to sound like you're from somewhere. You should be able to master every little dialect. So mm. I took speech and I took that stuff hmm. seriously when I went to different places. When I was in New York, I used to sound like New York. I was in New York for a while. So I used to move and you used to sound like you in the park, the car, you, you know, St. Louis. Or you, so you just pick up down the South, you know, you pick up they little, it's the slang and, you know, you got no difference with Spanish people. You know what I'm saying? Mexicans are more lazy with this beach, you know what I'm saying? And Puerto Ricans, they talk for casa, you know, they're Latin people, they go, you know, it's a little quicker. So it's like you got a, these little ear things that you hear and living in those places, you know, kind of make me take all that to stage. So I'm like, okay, I have a plethora of stuff to add when I'm doing comedy, when I'm acting, because I used to see Sammy do it. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's kind of my thing. So whatever came first, athletes, you know, the athletic system came first because that was our key. You know, you know, my thing was to be known, get on TV, and hopefully, you know, do the, you know, even OJ was cool back then, but, you know, right now, maybe now he's not, but you seen him running through the airport, and you was like, okay, is that the way you have to make it if I can't sing and I can't dance? Like, you know, so you've been an athlete, and then, oh, maybe they get me into acting, because he had a lot of acting roles, had a lot of commercials. And I was like, man, okay, another bad black man on TV. How do you do that? And mm -hmm. so I'd be a good athlete. So I try to get all hone all these things into to a stage or to be able to be seen or to be able to present myself to like do exactly what I'm doing now. 